so you're coming to Denver and you want to do some airport research to make sure that your trip goes smoothly, you, my friend, are doing it right. If you didn't already know, the Denver International Airport, also known as DIA, is the second largest and third busiest airport in the world. It also has more conspiracy theories than any airport on the planet, but that's another video for another day. So in this video, I'm going to give you some tips to get around the airport, catch your flight, and get home on time from DIA. Let's do this. This could be the most important one, but DIA is not the airport where you want to cut things really close on time. Before I lived in Denver, I was always that person that showed up to the airport about an hour before my flight took off. Now, because of DIA, I get to the airport about 75 minutes, preferably 90 minutes before my flight. Similar to the also super busy Dallas airport, we have a train that takes you from the security checkpoint to your terminal, except for our train runs under the airport instead of outside of it. While you can walk from the main terminal to only the A gates, most people just end up taking the train because it will take you to the A, B, and C gates in the airport. So that means after you clear security, you're taking an escalator down, waiting for the train, getting on the train, getting off the train, and taking the escalator back up. This easily adds five to 10 minutes of airport time to your travel, and you really can't make things go any faster. So if you don't time things right, when you pair the train with the fact that the airport is really big, you could be running, not just jogging to your gate to catch your flight. Something else that trips people up at GIA is that TSA pre-check and non-pre-check are very split up at security here. If you're really rushing to catch your flight, you can look up the security line times for TSA pre-check and standard on the DIA website. I'll link to it somewhere on the screen here and I'll also put that in the description. So if you have pre-check, you'll check in on one side of the airport and if you don't, you'll check in all the way on the other side. The line obviously moves faster on the pre-check side, but not a lot of airports are completely split up like this, like DIA. You'll save yourself some stress if you remember that the north side is for pre-check, the south side is for standard, and then you can jump on that train. When you're visiting Denver, one of the great parts about DIA is that you can get directly to and from the airport by taking the A line that you can take from Union Station in downtown Denver. Right now, a light rail ticket to the airport costs $10.50, and train leave about every 15 minutes or so. When you compare that to about a $50 Uber or Lyft ride from the airport to downtown Denver, that can help you save some money. From Union Station, it takes about 40 minutes to get to the airport by light rail, so just in case you arrive at exactly the wrong time when a train has just left, I would recommend getting to Union Station about 60 minutes before you want to get to the airport. And if you know that you're going to be taking the light rail while you're in Denver, there's an RTD mobile tickets app that you can use to buy tickets on your phone instead of going to a machine. It's pretty simple to use, and the good part is that you can buy a ticket for the train literally as it's arriving. In my opinion, one of the most confusing parts about DIA is the levels. At some airports, everything is all on one level, that is not the case with DIA. I think this might be changing with all the construction that's going on, but here's how things work right now. Level six, or six, however you do it, it's for departures and checking it. Level five is where the baggage claim is, and that's also where you'll get shuttles to hotels, parking lots, and catch an Uber or a Lyft. And level four is where people get picked up for arrivals. And the reason why this is confusing is that a lot of people go to baggage claim on level five, get their bags and immediately go outside and all they see is shuttles and buses instead of their friends picking them up. So if you have a friend who's picking you up, you actually want to get your bag from baggage claim and go down the escalator or elevator to level four and then they'll meet you there. But a hack that some people do is they have their friends pick them up on level six from departures because that that level has a way of moving a little bit faster. It does look a little weird because you're getting in a car while everybody else is getting out of the car, but some people swear by this. Either way, if a friend is picking you up, just pay attention to the level so that you can tell your friend where you are. At a lot of airports, it does make sense to park at an off airport parking lot. So this can be something like the parking spot or whatever your local version is. At DIA, I personally think that there is a strong argument to be made to park at the economy lot instead of those off airport parking 
parking lots, and I'll explain. First, it's only about $4 more per day to park at the economy lot compared to an off-airport lot like Park DIA or Fine Airport Parking. DIA also has its own parking lot called Pikes Peak that requires a quick shuttle ride over from level 5, and that one's only $8 a day. And a huge thing is that you can walk to the airport from the economy lot, and you can't do that with those off-airport lots, so you're left to the mercy of those parking shuttles. The economy lot also has its shuttles, but if you're kid-free and the weather is nice, it's about a 10-minute walk. Not too bad. Of course, like any parking lots, sometimes these lots can fill up around really busy travel times, but you can check the DIA website and it will tell you which lots are open. Food at the Denver airport is literally evolving as we speak. It is not great right now, but it's about to feel a lot more Denver in 2023. There are plans for a few local favorites, including Mr. Oso, Jack's Fish House, Rosenberg's Bagels, and The Post to open in DIA this year. In the meantime, there's a scaled down version of Denver Central Market in Concourse A, and there's an airport version of Route Down, which has been a longtime Denver favorite in Concourse C. And if you're not in the mood for a full meal because airport prices are crazy, you can head over to Concourse C and grab some ice cream from Little Man Ice Cream or a beer at Great Divide Brewing. And you'll notice this immediately, but DIA basically always feels like it's under construction. In theory, the construction at DIA will be done in 2028, but it will probably be like 2030 because that's how things work. So even if you've been to DIA, I don't know, like two or three years ago, the way that you got around might have changed because things are opening up and changing along the way. It's actually kind of incredible when I think about all of the different routes that I I've taken around the airport in the past few years and this is another reason why it's important to get to the airport a little bit early because you might have to take the long way around because of construction. So depending on your gate you'll probably see the older regular parts of the airport and you'll also probably see some of the new parts so if it feels like the airport can't decide what it wants to look like it's because that construction is happening right now. The new parts are obvious, they're much bigger, brighter, the ceilings are taller, they feel more like the modern parts of SFO and LAX, and you'll immediately notice the difference. DIA just keeps getting busier and all of this work is much needed and long overdue. It's going to look great, despite the fact that they built one of the new bathrooms in a way that people who are sitting in an airplane can actually see you washing your hands from their seats. It's Super weird, but the new parts look nice. And if you're an airport lounge person, we do have a few of them at DIA, but this is also going to change soon. Unfortunately, the Priority Pass membership doesn't really do a lot here, but there are other options that all get pretty busy. There's an American Airlines Admirals Club in Concourse A, and there's a Delta Sky Club on the south side of the airport, and there's also a USO lounge as well. If you have one of the higher tier MX cards, there's a huge Centurion lounge in Concourse C, and it's the second largest one of its kind in the country. Country. You would not believe how many times I had to say Centurion Lounge, it's just not something that rolls off the tongue. And very soon, a Capital One Lounge will be opening in Concourse A. There's a lot of hype around this lounge, and I'm pretty excited to check it out and see what it's like. So if you're coming to Denver and you're getting all hyped about it, here are a couple videos that will help you plan your weekend and know where to eat while you're in town. Check them out to have a great time in the Mile High City.